Now we're going to create the R and there's a couple of different approaches and I'm going to make a path around the outside and then I'll make a path on the inside and I could then set the outside path to be solid and I can set the inside path to be the color of whatever my background is. But what if you had a photograph or you had something with a texture or multiple, back, uh, multiple colors? Well then I would, I would create my two outlines, I would fill both of them, and I would use the center part, this counterpart, to punch a hole through the outside part. So let's go ahead and create our shape and then we can take a look at our alternatives. So let's get the pen tool and make sure that I have my pen tool set. No fill, you should have a stroke. One point is fine. Now you have to choose where you're going to get started. So, I don't know, I think I'll start right here. And now I'll have to think about where I'm going to place my points. So, again, I'm trying to go with as few as possible. So I'll put one here need to get curve, so maybe like so. So I'm just thinking about where I'm going to place these points. And right now I'm going to the outside of various curves. I'll hold the shift key this time so I get a nice straight edge. This was fairly short so I didn't have a problem getting a straight edge here. I'll go around, hold the shift key again. you notice it's off just a little bit. That's okay, I can fix that later. And then we will complete our path. Okay, So I'm just blocking in my basic path shape. So let's get our convert tool and let's zoom in so we have a little more detail. And I'll start right up here, bring in my basic curve, just establishing the curve. Now I'll get this one. Maybe like so. Doesn't have to be perfect. Come back and tweak things. Get this curve in. Now I have to make up my mind. Do I want the top to be right? Do I want the bottom to be right? Well, I'm going to go with the bottom this time because it's easier to fix the top, I think. Okay? So I can go back and get the white arrow and now select this top handle and hold the shift key so I can constrain. I'll bring this in a little bit and then I'll bring this handle in a little bit. All right. And now it's a matter of I may need to move this point to get the curve just the way that I want. And just go in and make some subtle changes. Okay. Let's go down now. This time I have a couple decisions to make. How am I going to deal with this point? Well, let's just go ahead and add a curve. And that'll sort of mess things up for a moment. But once you have the curve, now I want you to take the Convert tool, click on the handle, and we'll break the connection between the two handles. Okay. So now that I've done this, I can move the two handles independently. But make sure you do this with the white arrow. So I'll click on my point to get my other Maybe I'll zoom in, that helps a little bit. Click on this point. And now I have a very complex corner going on here. And I'll come back in and I can fix all that later. Just getting the basic shape in. 
and we'll add a little curve here, okay, just a little. Don't worry, we can fix this later. Now we'll add our curve. We'll add some curve. Just keep doing this. We'll go around on each point. This one I'll hold the shift key to constrain it. Just pull this out a little bit because I want some curve on this one also. I want to follow the path. curve. Again, I'll use the handle that is on the right hand side now and I'll try to line that up with the original line so I don't mess up the curve below it too much. Just a little bit of curve. Now we'll add some curve here. I'm using the line on the left hand side trying to keep that one straight. Okay, this one I have to spin around. Now I'm using the handle on the right hand side to try to keep that straight with the line on the right hand side. Just a little curve, not too much. Now we'll go to this point and I'll use the line on the bottom to try to line things up. Pull it back in so that top curve is not too pronounced. Alright, let's go down. Now I'll use the handle on the top to follow the top line to keep that as straight as possible. Just bring in a little curve. I'll go to my next point. Now I'm going to follow the line, the path, on the right-hand side to try to keep that straight. And just bring in a little curve to the left-hand side. Alright, now we'll drag out another curve. Again, I'll use the left hand side, or I should say not, I'll use the uh, left hand side and try to keep that handle straight and just pull out some curve. Now this is your choice here. Um, if you want this to stay straight or if you want to try to bring a little curve into this, it's really up to you on this, your personal preference. I think I might bring just a little curve in, so I'll spin this around and I'll use the handle on the left hand side to keep things straight then we'll pull back in just to get a subtle curve on this like so. Alright, now let's get this side. I'll use the right hand side and try to keep that straight. Now I'm going to use the right hand side on the top. Try to keep that straight. Right. All right, I'll have to spin this around, so I'm going to use the handle on the left-hand side and try to keep that line straight. Just bring in a little bit of a curve, so we'll get some of the curve on this one, and we'll get some of the curve on this anchor point. I've got to spin it around. I'm going to try to keep the line straight on the top. Bring it back to the point to reduce that curve a little bit. Good. Let's go to the top. I'll use the white arrow, I'm going to click on my point, and then just use the arrow keys and just nudge this over one point. Then let's add our curve. I have to spin this around. So I'm going to let the handle on the bottom, I'll try to let that one stay straight. Just bring in a little bit of curve, not all the way, because we get the rest of the curve on the next point. All right, now I'll use the handle on the left hand side. Try to keep that one straight. Bring it back in to reduce the curve a little bit. Good. All right, now this point, I have to spin it around, use the handle on the right hand side to keep that one straight. Bring it back in just, a, and when I say straight, straight with the, with the line that it's on. Just a little bit of curve. Now let's do the top. I'm trying to keep this one now on the right hand in line with the line that's already there. Let's pull it back. So we just reduce that curve. And that's pretty good. Now I think it's a matter of, let's zoom out. We take a look at this part here. I'm just going to use the white arrow, click on this, drag it down so I can see that shape 
and then we'll bring it back up and that doesn't look so bad right there. This looks a little chunky in here. So I'm going to bring this handle in until this smooths out some. And that's not too bad. All right, so let's go around. This is okay. This might be a little strange right here. So let's zoom in. And I'm going to click on my point and just bring it out here for a second. And it might look like it's messed up, but it's no big deal. Now we'll bring it back. And I want to watch where my blue lines go. And I can see that up in this area, it's just not looking perfect yet. So I'm going to bring this in like so. And now I think I'll use this handle and let this handle go up a little bit. And I like that curve a lot better. Okay, now this point, or this handle here, I might need to bring in a little bit, and I might even take this point and bring it further down, so I can have a much more gradual curve here. So I might bring this down some. Now you can see by bringing this down, I can still keep my line straight, but now this angle up here is not quite as severe, so I can take this handle and maybe pull it out just a little bit. Maybe it, this one needs to go in and this needs to go up a little. Okay? Until everything looks about right. Alright, so let's zoom out. And that looks pretty close. Okay? So now I'm going to create my shape or my outline on the inside. So let's go ahead and get our pen tool and we'll zoom in a little bit. And I think I will begin right here. We'll go here, 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 right here, and then we will close our path. Let's get our convert tool. I think I'll start on the large curve and just get that large curve in. I'll get the top first because it looks like it's coming the closest first. So we'll go with the top, get the white arrow, bring the bottom handle down just a little bit. Okay. Now this might look okay, but it's a little, it'll be a little lumpy. So let's add a very subtle curve to this. So I'll pull this out. And I just want to introduce my curve. Okay, now we'll go to the next and I'll pull this out. I'll have to spin it around and I'll let the handle on the right be the one that I try to keep straight. Bring in just a little bit of curve. Now we'll do the top. Click and drag this out. I have to spin it around. The one on the top is the one that I'll try to keep straight. Now we'll bring this in get that curve to be a little more gentle. Okay, now let's get our next. I'll take this, spin it around. The bottom one will be the one that I try to keep straight. We'll bring this down, nice gentle curve. A Little bit less. And now this point, drag it out. I'll keep this one straight, it's working out right. I'll keep this straight on the right hand side. Reduce the curve. Good. Now, this looks okay, but I'm going to introduce just a small gentle curve here also. And I'll keep the handle on the left, the one that I try to keep straight. And we'll bring this back. And if it it's difficult, let it be longer so you can keep the handle on the left hand side straight and then either A, click on this handle and bring it in or click on the point and use your arrow, arrow keys and bring the whole point over and then maybe drag the handle back out to get that gentle curve in there until you're happy with it. Okay. 
So I'm going to zoom out, and for now, I think that's going to be perfectly fine. So I'm going to save. This will take a moment. Save to a legacy version here. That way, in case something goes wrong, I don't lose all of that work. So my file is saving. So now, I could take this shape, the first one we created, and let's go ahead and swap our stroke for a fill. We have our other shape on top, okay, which is just an outline stroke. So I could take this one and I could fill this with white. I think I'll do that right up here. So let's look at our options. And I happen to be in CMYK mode right now, it looks like. So I'll take my fill and just click on the white chip. And we would have our shape. Okay, So I could select these two objects and then group them. All right, And that would be perfectly fine if I were working on a white background or a solid background and I could keep changing this shape to match. So as an example, let's just go ahead and get a color. I'll just get a block here. And let's set this background to a color, like so. All right. Now, moving this a little fast here, might be easier with the space bar and the grabber. With the black arrow, I'm going to select my object, object, arrange, and let's go ahead and send this to back. So there's a good example. Now this has white inside. So what I'll do instead is I'm going to select both of these objects and I'll hold the option key and I'm going to do a drag copy off to the side over here. Okay? So in case something goes wrong, I haven't lost all my hard work. I can go back and get this. Okay? All right, so here is my shape. Right now it's solid and it has a border on it. I don't think that's going to matter. I think what I'll do instead is swap these and I'll get rid of the border. So I just have a solid shape. All right. And then I'll hold the shift key and select the shape underneath. I'll bring my pathfinder over and I'm going to minus the front. So now I have one shape that I can move anywhere. Okay, This shape is still remembering, uh, I should say, this shape should still remember the two pieces of geometry that make it up. I could probably expand the compound shape and just have one single piece of vector art, but I'm going to keep the compound shape. If I needed to make changes, I could always go back and once I make a compound shape, I can release it. Okay. All right, so let's move this out of the way and we'll zoom out. And there you go. That's how you would make a more complex character like the letter R that has an interior space, a counter space, that you might have to see through.